It sounds like something out of a horror film, flesh-eating beetles that can clean a carcass down to the bone. But the beetles I'm talking about work for the San Diego Natural History Museum. They are beetles of the family Dermestidae, which are specialized for feeding on dried, decaying flesh on the skeleton and get it down to be completely clean, except possibly for some tough connective tissue. Philip Unit is curator of the Department of Birds and Mammals at the San Diego Natural History Museum. He says the beetles aren't a threat to humans because they're very slow and eat only dead, dried muscle. But they could be a danger to the museum if they ever got out of their display case. Right, yes, because the same beetles that we rely on to clean the skeletons can destroy the collection of bird and mammal skins if they were to get into it. One day a week, Unit devotes to prepping specimens like this one. So now we apply cornmeal generously to keep the, uh, any blood or body juices from soiling the feathers. Unit became interested in birds and their identification as a teenager. I started reading the literature on bird distribution and, e and ecology and realized the critical role that specimens played in understanding that. So it was something I wanted to learn to do myself and our former curator was teaching ornithology at SDSU that semester and he said come to the museum and learn how to skin birds. The basic purpose of his department is to preserve birds and mammals for scientific study. It has about 48,000 bird specimens and 23,000 mammal specimens accumulated over 140 years. Here we have a skull of the short-tailed albatross picked up by A.W. Anthony on Pacific Beach, 6th of May, 1893, number 69 in our collection. Here we have a bat, a flying fox, collected on the island of Guadalcanal, August 11th, 1944. Someone fighting in World War II uh, took time to document the biodiversity of Guadalcanal. People bring the museum dead birds and animals that they find. Then UNIT has to decide if the specimen is worth keeping, if it tells us a new story. Take this gull that struck the new Sunrise Power Link. Birds strike power lines and kill themselves. But we discovered a migration that no one knew of Sabine's gull, that they apparently would come up through the Gulf of California and then cross over. Unit points out the importance of museum collections by citing how pelican eggs help to reveal the detrimental impact of DDT. Scientists were able to note a calcium deficiency in eggshells that made them too fragile to incubate. How would we know what the proper thickness of a pelican e eggshell is if we didn't have one that was collected before DDT was even invented? So the moral of the story is whatever we may collect and prepare and preserve these specimens for now, future generations are going to come up with uses that we can't even imagine. That's because each generation of biologists has a responsibility to help us understand the factors that can impact our environment. Research collections in museums are like the ground floor of biology. All your guides to the identification of plants and animals were written by scientists working with collections like Ours. Unit often gets asked why the museum keeps so many examples of a single species. One answer to that is which one of us can represent the human species? All species of animals uh, really encompass uh, diversity, so to understand both diversity within a species as well as diversity among species, the collection is critical. So remember, there's a lot more going on at the San Diego Natural History Museum than what you see on display.